Welcome back to the 2000s, everyone. Time is a circle, and we have made a full revolution back to the age of question of which is better, Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter, a matter that has gripped the hearts of every teenager at the turn of the millennia and which will be the subject of today's Dash Fight video. To be fully clear, there is absolutely nothing in the world that says either Mortal Kombat 1 or Street Fighter 6 has to be the best title. Thankfully, the fighting games community has learned over the decades that multiple titles can coexist alongside each other, and more than that, they can be enhanced by each other's successes from the company to the player. Events are more engaging when all the main titles grip audiences' attention, players suffer less from burnout if they can rotate across multiple titles, and viewers get to experience a wide variety of high-quality gameplay. To be honest, we're not actually going to tell you which is the better title. For one, Mortal Kombat 1, the third Mortal Kombat 1, has not even been released yet. But with the absolutely gigantic success of Street Fighter VI, the question lingers in the air. How can Mortal Kombat achieve the same level of success as its contemporaries? Before we jump into the video, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to Dash Fight so you never miss one of our videos. Fight. Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter have been one of the most enjoyable, family-friendly rivalries of the fighting game genre. Both defined what a two-day fighting game is for those growing up in the early 2000s, and their cultural impact was not limited to just video games. A pair of Mortal Kombat movies certainly lifted the franchise to the mainstream audience, and over the past decade, the Street Fighter live-action movie has become a small cult classic for the fans of the franchise. Although Street Fighter has MK beat by a few years, First releasing in 1987, it would be during the 90s that the games would see their meteoric rise in popularity. Both franchises saw an explosion of releases with Mortal Kombat 1 through 4 and capping off the decade with MK Gold and Mortal Kombat Mythologies as a side release. For their part, Street Fighter would release 15 games in that time, spanning Street Fighter 2 all the way to Street Fighter 3 Third Impact. Yes, there are 15 games. Or, well, versions squished between 2 and 3. As Mortal Kombat grew in popularity during the early decade, especially in the US and Europe, Street Fighter solidified its place in the arcades, offering some of the most entertaining experiences right before the collapse of the industry and, in hindsight, the inevitable rise of home consoles. Street Fighter, however, has always enjoyed a massive competitive scene worldwide. This has been especially noticeable in recent years, with the Capcom Cup quickly becoming one of the most recognizable circuits in the FGC, where grassroots third-party events are the primary source of top-level competition. Many will remember Mortal Kombat's own foray into first-party esports with its own circuit, the Pro Competition. Of course, it's written with a K. Just don't question it. The circuit's high point was in 2019, and due to the pandemic in 2020 onwards, it was put to the side. Not to mention the fact that Mortal Kombat 11 was also nearing its end in terms of updates also did not help matters. Thus, we come into an interesting unbalance between these franchises. Street Fighter was built a competitive icon for the FGC, with regular first and third party tournaments, but challenged by mainstream skeptics who don't really click with its mechanics. On the other side, you have a cultural sleeper cell in Mortal Kombat, which at its peak has blasted as a plight on the youth for its violence, yet that only helped boost its popularity with a broad young audience who was also riding on atop of a remarkable box office success. Yet years of innovation in the industry have left Mortal Kombat feeling smaller out of all the major fighting game titles in terms of competition than its player size would lead you to believe. So Fire God Liu Kang can rewrite not just its game canon, but real life? Tropes and artistic styles were not the only things Mortal Kombat lifted from comic books. The franchises and Ed Boon's willingness to remake the world of Mortal Kombat every few years is straight out of the comic book medium. Although Mortal Kombat 1 does seem to be slightly different, not just as a retelling of what is most likely a cobbled together story for each character, but a continuation of Mortal Kombat 11's story with the idea of Fire God Liu Kang remaking the world anew. An example that the team at Netherrealm has already confirmed is that now Scorpion and Sub-Zero are brothers. These small details will reward longtime fans of the franchise who love the Ravel and the campiness of it, and there will be multiple Easter eggs to the storylines that never developed in the games or any related media. But could this flexibility with its own story and characters mythos hurt MK1? 
Street Fighter VI has shown that it values the power of canonical stories. Take for example, DJ, who was introduced to the franchise decades ago, and even with him missing on the bulk of the franchise. He returns to Street Fighter VI fresh and with some nice light backstory that players of previous entries in the franchise will instantly pick up on. Mortal Kombat is an interesting contradiction between its lore and its fan service. On one hand, Fire God Liu Kang has completely reset the timeline, which surely means most baddies, those that fans loved, along with some heroes, are now gone. But no. Instead, we have confirmed cameos from classic versions of Mortal Kombat, like Sonya Blade, Goro, and Kano, and there is certainly an air of nostalgia wave with the likes of Jean-Claude Van Damme cameos and many more that are likely to follow. This is not to say it won't work. If anything, it might be a lot of fun. But Street Fighter VI has set the bar really high regarding compelling characters and stories. Fans of the franchise are rewarded for their time playing those titles and picking up on character stories. For the newcomers, they know that they can just look back at the old games and see a character develop, and also understand why Ryu is an absolute boomer when he's texting you. We don't know the full extent of Mortal Kombat 1's story mode yet, but we know it will follow the steps of Mortal Kombat 11, a high-quality linear experience contrasting heavily with the open-world customizable of Street Fighter's World Tour. Maybe NetherRealm Studios will successfully craft a personal story for its core characters that captures an audience's attention through quality over Street Fighter's more contemporary take on single-player. It's wild to look back at the early 2000s and where Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter were in terms of their gameplay mechanics. There have been many fundamental changes in the genre, and it seems it has shifted into a new direction post-2020. Be it Rage, Drive, or Cameos. The big titles of the contemporary genre all agree that there is a need for a mechanic that can break through the tension of the neutral in a match as well as give a window of opportunity to players to come back for an early disadvantage on the round. For Street Fighter, they landed on a universal drive system, giving players a tool, limited via a source bar right below the health bar, that enables anything from rapid gap closers to massive damage to counterattacks and more. This, paired with Street Fighter 6's generally shorter normals, has made fights feel a bit more dynamic. Now, you only have options in neutral consisting of normals and specials, but you could also engage in your opponent or react to them with a drive move. But it's not a silver bullet. Overreaching or being predictable with it can still lead to it being punished. From what we know of the cameo system in Mortal Kombat 1, it would fulfill a similar purpose. Cameos can come into the stage and help players extend combos or cut combos off from opponents essentially replacing the breakaway mechanic from MK11. At the same time, they are not tied to the characters themselves, whereas drives are for Street Fighter VI ones. This could lead to some interesting, and fingers crossed, not at all unbalanced combinations of main and cameo fighters that can cover for each other's weaknesses. Cameos thus replace the variation system of Mortal Kombat 11. Here again, NetherRealm Studios faces another major change. Cameos is a new system, one that some people have already raised an eyebrow at, given that Mortal Kombat has rarely been an assist or team fighter. We are soft counting MK9's team mode here. So far, the players that were able to get their hands on the game early had positive comments about the system and its integration with the rest of the game. That bodes well for the competitive scene, but from a casual perspective, there might be a gap in understanding that might need to be addressed. Street Fighter's tutorial and World Tour modes can do that easily. For Mortal Kombat, it remains to be seen how new players are supposed to be onboarded about cameos. This is where Mortal Kombat, and NetherRealm Studios as a whole, has the biggest uphill battle of them all. The good news is the ball is in their court. After the pro competition, there have been very few high-profile first-party tournaments for NRS titles. The existence of events like EVO, Combo Breaker, CEO, among many others, have helped keep the scene alive. But when Capcom Cup comes out boasting a total prize pool of $2 million, it's hard to find a player in the FGC that hasn't entertained the idea of picking up Street Fighter VI for a chance to win some of that money. But it's not all about the money. In fact, 
The bulk of what makes environments like Tekken World Tour and Capcom Cup enticing for young, hungry players who want to improve themselves is the ability to be part of those circuits locally. Embracing the local grassroots of the FGC has done wonders for all FGC publishers and developers. If Mortal Kombat 1 wants to be the main stage game for all these major events, it must elevate its fanbase to match the energy of the other scenes. Whether they seek to achieve that via another pro competition circuit or some other similar idea, we can only wait and see. As we mentioned in our gameplay section, the few players and commentators that got their hands on the game and recorded some gameplay have said they liked what they saw, so it's not a stretch to think that there will be a healthy pool of top players from the very start. But NetherRealm Studios should consider how they can ensure it's not just the old guarding jumping on board with Mortal Kombat, but a new generation of talent that might currently be eyeing Street Fighter VI's extensive offering. From partnering with local tournaments, to bringing in big names like Red Bull Gaming for their top class events, to in-game features that naturally improve the player base, such as recommending matchup replays after being defeated. Capcom is building a strong ecosystem for its player base no matter where they land on the skill curve. Can Mortal Kombat 1 do the same? It is too early to say if Mortal Kombat 1 will reach the same heights as Street Fighter 6, which achieved over a million copies sold in its first week and over 70,000 peak players on PC via Steam alone. It will be a challenge for anyone to come close to those numbers, but maybe, if anyone can, it's Mortal Kombat 1. So what do you think? Can this generation of Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter bring another massive decade for fighting games? Maybe Tekken 8 will tag along too and reignite the flames of 3D fighters. Tell us your theories in the comment section below.